seems legit. Good morning my legitimates and welcome back to my channel, although it might be afternoon by the time you watch this. Today I am making the Marmaris by Needle and Anchor and it just come out amazing. Um, to do this I have done as a separate video which is the reverse applique, uh, but I really like this pattern. It's really cute. I did stuff up the handle. I just forgot about it apparently, uh, but I do show you how to solve that problem and do a different type of handle. And I've used like a bend lock instead of a twist lock, but you get the same effect. I um, mean, then inside the bag, it kind of opens all the way out. You've got a zipper pocket and some slip pockets on the other wall. So if you want to see how to build this bag, please stay tuned. Let's get started. Uh, so you'll notice this from my other video. This is where we're using it. So the first thing I'm going to do is the insides, I think, because the outsides are all pretty simple. So I've got a slip pocket, which I've done my own way, not intentionally, I just run out of fabric, uh, and a zipper pocket. And these are the main bodies. I have interfaced with a medium woven interfacing. So normally this pattern has like an extra bit and then you can have like a lip, but I'm silly and didn't do it like that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put these right sides together like so and I'm going to stitch along the bottom. So I'm going to go to my two and a half stitch length and I'm just going to do three eighths of an inch. Stitch and back stitch. Like so. Trim off those tails. Uh, because this is the width of the bag, we don't need to worry about the other part. So now I'm just going to fold this so it's right sides together and this pocket does not look straight. Technically this is the right side. Alright, that is going to need to be straightened. That looks a little bit bigger than that end. Anyway, so we will need to iron that, uh, but because we need to iron the next one as well, we're just going to do all the ironing together. So I'm going to take one of my lining pieces and as always, we are going to find the center. And the bottom. I love a good center. It makes my life easier. Now, for those just new to bag making, this piece here is the bottom. So when you're placing your zipper pocket, you don't want to place it past here because that's technically the bottom, like the end of the wall, and this will be the bottom of the bag. So we need to make sure that it's up higher, just so you all know. Now, ruler, what have I got? Pen, I'm going to go, so I'm going to do a Tory pocket, but this is bigger than a Tory pocket. So at the fold, Tory pocket works for everything. So at the fold, we're going to go half an inch down. And I like to go three quarters of an inch in from the edge, but you can actually do whatever you like. I am not the boss of you. Like that. Um, you can go further out, but I find three quarters of an inch from the edge is actually the easiest way to do stuff. So then I'm going to draw the rectangle like so. And that will be what we stitch. So the side that I just drew on, I'm going to find the center of the pocket. The other side doesn't matter, so don't worry about that. I'm just going to make a little snip. And then you want to line up this point with that point. Now, if you need to, you can grab a ruler. Uh, you also want to make sure that this is level and not crooked. So like this technically is lined up with that point but you can see it's considerably crooked, so that's not what we want. Um, I like to go, I eyeball it, but it's about an inch up from the edge of every bag ever. Um, I personally just find that works for me. Um, I don't measure it, but you will find that the more you do it, the more you will do exactly the same thing over and over and over. So, I mean, and that looks bigger than half an inch, just saying because it is. Right. I thought it looked wrong. I'm just going to draw another line. So 
The reason that that is bigger than half an inch is technically because the other ruler is an inch and a quarter wide, so the center of it is not actually the full size. But anyway, doesn't matter. I got it sorted. It did look really big. So then I'm just going to use that new line that I drew as my guide. I'm also going to run out of bobbin thread soon. I do know that. It's fine. So, trim off the tails, trim off that jump stitch at the other end, and on the back. It is important to trim that jump stitch because you will find that it um, doesn't help the pocket turn through as well if you leave it there. I'm going to grab some scissors, and I'm just going to chop in the center of that those two lines. The reason we don't seal off those ends as well is because I find I get a nice crisper corner if I don't stitch it. But in exchange, what you have to do is leave three quarters to an inch when you triangle out those corners so that it will catch in the stitches that go around. If you do a tiny little triangle, you're going to fiddle with it a lot to make sure that it stays hidden. So the longer they are, the easier they are to deal with. There is a point where they get too long, but, you know, it's fine. So, put them back there. I'm now going to go and iron this pocket through, and I'm going to iron this so it's even, um, and then we can finish all the pockets. Okay, so they are now all ironed and fabulous and flat. So let's go with the zipper pocket. So I'm just going to take some zipper. I've decided on a light pink because it is in the lining. And I'm just gonna cut a piece, I can't, you can't see that, that is the width of the fabric. Like so. Um, and this works for any size pocket. That's why I like doing it this way. Put my elastic band back on my zipper so it doesn't unravel, cause me grief. Grab a zipper, pull. Whoops, drop something on the ground because that's a pretty standard thing for my videos. Probably shouldn't point it out to you, but it is kind of amusing that apparently I am just clumsy and drop everything. Okay. So, pull the zip on, but you just want to pull it about a third of the way in. We don't want to go too far. I'll show you why in a sec. So, we should now have this opened and flat. We're just going to open it out flat and lay it over the zipper. Like so. I also didn't wind it a bit bobbin. I'm going to check my bobbin before we do this. Oh, no, we've got enough to do this. That's fine. Even though the stitching will blend in with the lining because it's a crazy print, I still just want it to be cool. So, line that up there. So we're lining it up so that the edge of this is in line with the vinyl, like so. Then I'm going to start here. Stitch, back stitch. I'm going to back stitch because you won't see it. It's all blended in with the fabric. Um, if you have a very plain fabric, what you might want to do is stitch, and then when we get back to the start, we'll just back stitch over the first lot so you've got less back stitching to look at. In this particular case, you won't see it, so it's no big deal. Now, zip this all the way over, and that way your zipper will not be distorted as we continue around. Down, over, back up, get back to the start, back stitch. Trim your tails. I know I say that a lot, there is method in my madness. So now we're just going to fold this down and just stitch the sides, leaving the bottom open. So the best way to do that is to just, from the top, pull it over and stitch it down. So we're going to stitch, back stitch, and down the side and back stitch at the end. Trim it off. Trim your tails while you're here, otherwise you will forget. Trust me, I do it all the time. Spin it so it's upside down. Again, pull the top back and then stitch bottom to top. It doesn't affect anything if we go top to bottom or bottom to top. Uh, it's just easier. So I'm going to zip this open and that is one wall done. Now let's do the second wall. 
So I'm doing it differently. So this piece is way longer, but I knew that when I cut it, it was just like the end part. So what I want to do is I actually want to fold it over. I really miss my long nails. I went to a new nail place because mine's temporarily shut and they cut all my nails off. I'm very upset because now I can't do cool stuff like score this properly. So we're going to grab my little scraper and I'm going to scrape along the edge to create like a small crease. I find this way the easiest. Actually, I find it easier with my nails, but you know, can't do anything about it now. So I'm just lining up the raw edges and then basically ramming my finger, but that's okay, to create the crease. Now it's not super huge, but you can see it because it's going to make it easier to now put this fabric up against that crease, fold it over, and it will top stitch perfectly. So I'm going to go up to a top stitch length. And we're going to stitch and back stitch because I like to lock things in. It's my my jam. And then you just fold the crease over and top stitch everything down. And it is literally that simple. And yes, I knew my vinyl was longer. Um, also, sometimes if you cut it the right size and you find it's longer by the time you've finished, it's what happens is your vinyl actually stretched. Which is not always a terrible thing, but if you've pulled on the vinyl instead of just folding it over, it may cause a ripple effect in your pocket. So if that you ever encounter that problem, it's because you pulled your vinyl instead of pushed it over. Um, it also happens with like my glitter vinyl because it's thinner, it's just bound to do it. But this one worked out great. So now we've got no raw edge at the bottom. We've got this beautiful accent which is going to stand out against our lining. So especially if you've done, like if I had it that way, you can at least see where the pocket would be. But I've done it this way because, I don't know, I was feeling excessive and fabulous. It's fine. All right, we're going to grab a ruler because it's the easiest way to line things up. I'm going to go one and a half inches up. And then we're just going to line that up there like so. And I'm going to stitch down this edge along the bottom and up. So I've just made sure that this is straight. You can kind of actually put it wherever you want. That's just where I've decided. Uh, well, Joy, so the pattern does tell you where you should put it. But as always, I do what I want. And if you're if you're an intermediate bag maker, it's kind of fun to change up the pattern. You should try it. You might find yourself pleasantly surprised. Apparently I cut this too big, such as life, which means I may not have caught the edge when I did that. Oh, look at that. That was perfect bobbin roulette. I like it. Um, so you flip it over. I did get it, so we're good. I'm going to take some scissors. These probably won't cut. Oh, they will. These are my paper scissors. They tend to be terrible. Hubby must have sharpened them for me. So I'm just going to cut off the excess at each end so that the panel is the panel size it will help you later when you're joining all the bag together now obviously that is much too big of a pocket and it will just flop but i'm gonna pause do another bobbin and then we'll come back right bobbin is refreshed so now you can put your dividers wherever you like um i'm thinking about six inches i don't know i like six inch pockets so I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm going to stitch and back stitch and stitch and back stitch. Then we're just going to go up. And then when I get on this top part, I'm going to stitch and back stitch twice. Now that is just going to be a pressure point there or a stressor point, whichever way you want to look at that. Uh, so by double back stitching, it's going to make it stronger. Um, and then I might do... out there so I'm gonna have two larger pockets and then like a little one in the middle so the little one is and I do this in a lot of bags the middle one is big enough to hold like a snack 
So like a, a muesli bar or, you know, something small like that. It's like a snack pocket. Specifically designed. You don't have to do that. You could turn, make it skinnier, turn it into a pen pocket. Whatever floats your boat. Alright, trim off the tails. Flip it over so you can see them all. Cut them off. Right, so now I've got one, two, three. You could have also made all the pockets um, level and even, but remembering that you've got a seam allowance if you wanted to do that. Otherwise your middle will end up bigger than your outers because of the seam allowance. So that's just another thought for you if you want to do it that way. So that's that one done. Now, let's sew them together. So, right sides together, boom. Back to, oh, I'm still on a joining stitch length, so that's good. I'll line up that side edge. Um, now I've got these. I'm going to do a separate video on them, but it's essentially just a really strong magnet. So if you want to, and this is like a quick lazy way of doing stuff, line it up at your seam allowance, and then you just butt it up your fab oops. You butt up the fabric against the magnet and you'll get a perfect seam. I had one, but I discovered that it A wasn't big enough, it wasn't long enough, and uh, the magnet wasn't strong enough, so I found that it moved. So I now have this one, which is amazing. I need to stop doing that on video. I actually do it when there's nobody in the house quite a lot. It makes me happy to go fast. What can I say? I'm a hoon. All right, line up here and here. I also don't realize I'm doing it until I've already done it. Oh, see, I just did it again. Oh my God, stop. I can't help myself. I'm definitely insane. It's fine. All right, we're going to sew the bottom. We're going to sew the whole bottom shut because we're going to turn through the zipper pocket, which is nice and large. So, stitch. Let's not make the zoomy noise. Way harder than you think, just so you know. Make sure you trim off all your tails as you go. The less tails, less mess. So, we're going to go into this corner. I'm going to put my fingers at the right angle and pull. And so then you want to line up this and you want to have one tail going one way. Well, not tail, seam allowance, excess. And the other one going the other way. This creates a flatter seam and easier to sew. Uh, if you're new to pattern making, put one, or bag making, put one clip to hold each of the sides. And then you can just flatten it out and stitch it. The downside to the magnet is that you have to take the clips off when you get to it. Uh, but you have options. So you can have it more forward or more back or more centered. Whatever's going to suit your style of sewing. So with the next one, because we stitched this one this way, the other one has to go the same way. So we want to push that one that way and then the other one in the opposite direction. So that that will sit flat on the base. If you accidentally stitch it the other way, in fact, let's do it. Don't do this, but I'm going to stitch it the wrong way to show you how to fix the problem. Right, so let's pretend like you've sewed it and you don't want to unpick it. Again, don't do this, but I'm just going to show you how to fix it in case you do. Because it can happen. Alright, so let's pretend like you just did that and that was naughty. Again, don't recommend it. What you're going to do is you're going to come to here and you're going to take your snips. Actually, I'm going to take my V scissors and we're going to snip about a quarter inch from that seam and just a little bit before there so that that will now sit flat and this little bit won't matter. So that's how you can fix it if you do it. Again, don't recommend it. Don't do it just because I did it. I feel like I've said that enough now. I'm sure somebody will accidentally do it, but at least now you know how to fix it without having to unpick. So you just snip it 
so that then it will still sit flat because that little bit won't make a difference. Okay, inside's done. Let's pop it aside. Let's go to our outsides. Now I've kept all the pattern pieces here. Um, if you're going to make this bag multiple times, I do highly recommend cutting two lots of this because this, this size here is actually for the um, foam because it comes in one piece. So what I did to combat my problems is I've just printed off a section of the outside front because we need to add our, pop that there, we need to add our pleats. So, I probably should have chopped off this side bit as well. I haven't cut the whole thing out, as you can see, and it doesn't really mean it that I need to. But this piece will go on the edge here. And then now I can mark those two parts. Now again, probably could have done it before I cut the foam. Ignore the alarm that you may or may not be able to hear. Um, it's just the army base. They do this all the time. So, that bit goes to there, that bit goes to there. And I'm going to flip it over, line it up at the edge. And then we just need to pull it back so we can see. Obviously feels important. And then that one. And then I need another clip because I ran out of the other ones. So the centre of the clip is where the centre of the things are going to go. So keep that. You don't necessarily need the whole thing, but that will definitely be helpful. Um, it also happens to have the magnetic snap section, just saying. So then we are going to fold those together, like so. And then I'm going to take off one clip. So once I've lined up the clips, take off one. Because it'll be easier. And then... Pinch it. I'm going to move this magnet. See, it's very, very strong. That's why it's got a handle. Because you've got to kind of pull it forward and off. I don't recommend using these on domestic machines, though. They are incredibly strong and will mess up your internal domestic electronicness. All right. And then we're just going to stitch that. Right. I'm just tacking it in place. It's nothing spectacular. Yes, I did backstitch. It's a habit. Then we're going to do the same to the other one. So again, line up the centre with the centre here, that way, centre with the centre, line it up, stitch it down, Bob's your uncle, happy days. And rubbish in the bin. Okay, so now we also need to do our magnets. So you, you can again use this template if you need to or want to. Grab this. So then you can just line this fabric up and punch through the paper and everything else. Ta-da! And then once you've done that side, when you reverse it, you can already see where the hole is. Makes life much easier. And voila. So again, if you're going to make lots of these, keep that piece. It is important. Um, otherwise, there's also the magnetic snaps are on this piece as well. So you can just line it up however you want to do that. While I'm punching holes, we might as well do this one as well. So again, you've got to remember that there was a seam allowance. So if you wanted to, you could flip it over because it is symmetrical and line it up with your foam and then punch the holes that way. It's however you want to do it. These are just different options. And punch. Well, dry stuff. Do it however you like. They are just several options. I'm going to put the pattern over there. Oh, actually, I don't know why I just switched that because I've got to change it out anyway. This is my box of glorious different pieces. I like gadgets, so I have a lot 
Um, I have the large and the small magnet, so you can decide if you want a large or a small. Because I've done the bigger size bag, I'm going to use the bigger magnets. But that's my choice. Actually, I'm going to put them in there so I don't lose them and or drop them on the floor like I drop everything else. And I didn't get magnets. Let me go get some magnets. Generally speaking, you want to have the same half of the magnets on each side. Um... I don't know, I just put that in there. They're magnets, they're going to attract everything. Alright. I'm using gunmetal because I actually thought that they would blend in more at the side than silver. Um, you can mix metals. I know a lot of people are very anti-mixing of the metals. I'm going to because in my head, this is going to work out great. I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong. But, you never know. So, I'm going to do it anyway. I just think that the black kind of blends in more with the darkness of everything. Uh, but I didn't want black on everywhere because I didn't. So I'm going to mix it up. Obviously you cannot do that. Uh, but you do still need to install some magnets. I am using rivet magnets because I am obsessed with rivet magnets. They are my favourite. They're easy to install. They don't hurt my fingers. So very rarely will you see me using the other style anymore. Uh, but for those that don't want to buy a cam press and the, everything else, I do sell the other ones. I just, they are my favourites. I always use two hands to squish them. slots in. Now unfortunately you can't use the big size with the small rivet magnets. I did try. Uh, it messes them up royally. So unfortunately you can't do it that way. But I promise it wasn't from lack of trying on my behalf. So if you did want the different size magnets you are going to have to buy both the die sets. Um, I will probably do a video one day of why not to do it and show you how messed up they become. Um, the sticky outy part goes in. It just it just doesn't work. Anyway, moving on. Right. So that is the front and the back. Oh, let's make let's make the flap. I'm just trying to eliminate pieces as always because I like to eliminate pieces. It's just my thing, I guess. Uh, so there's my beautiful leaf. Um, reverse applique is a great option for people that don't want an embroidery machine um, and don't want to go and spend more money on more gadgets, really. Uh, all you need is a printer. Or if you're a really good drawer, you could just draw an outline of stuff or trace something. A scan and cut does make the cutting of that easier if you have one and remember to use it, which I did not. Um, but you know, can be done with nothing but some scissors and your machine. All right, so I'm going to leave the gap here because I've got to stitch that onto the bag anyway. So I may as well make my life easier. So I'm going to bring back my fabulous magnet. Now I want to sit it kind of right in the middle. And the reason for that is, is because then it just, it just works. So, the downside again is I have to keep moving all the clips, but you kind of have to do that anyway. But you do need to get a fabulously even uh, seam allowance with this, so do what you will with that information. You can get uh, domestic friendly ones at Spotlight. The magnets just aren't as strong. So if you're pushing up like a big bag, it might slip. That's all. But it is an option. All right. Zigzag. Oh, God, I dropped something else. Zigzag scissors. Love zigzag scissors. Chop, 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 chop. The 
reason we do zigzag scissors for anyone that is new and doesn't know is because it allows more flexibility in corners and curves. You'll also notice I'm leaving this. It's going to be easier in a minute. Now, actually, got more ideas for you. You don't have to do this. Normally I don't do it, but let's do it because I can. So, I'm going to put a piece of tape along next to those stitches, but where the hole is. I'm going to pull this back. This is for people that struggle, struggle to tuck stuff in, right? Stick it down. Boom, can't move now. And it's perfectly straight and in line with the rest of your stuff. So we can do that to both sides. You could also iron this side if you wanted to. Um, just make sure you don't touch your vinyl because you'll wreck it. Right, so you fold that down. So we're going to line it up there and there. Fold that down. And just like that, when we turn that through, which I've left a really tiny hole for, The smaller the hole you leave, the easier it is to get straight. However, the longer it takes to turn through because the hole's so small. So it's a bit of a bit of a gamble with that. But if you do the double-sided tape thing, it will make your life much easier. It just means you're using more double-sided tape. All right, I need my pokey stick or my turning stick. Love this thing. Uh, so you just push it against the whole seam allowance. It'll pull itself out. Along there, along there. Ta-da! And then, see that? It's all lined up and fabulous because I stuck it down. All right, now this is not sitting very nicely here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it in my fingers and Tori squish it. Um... Because it is only one layer, if you wanted to, you could grab your scraper, get it nice and on the edge, and then scrape it. It will do the same thing. Um, scrapers only work when it's like one layer, though. If you're doing multiples, it's not a thing, which is very unfortunate. Right. That is a fabulous looking flap, though. Take that off up to a decorative stitch length and I'm going to start over here and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch the whole way around. If you're new to sewing, maybe try a quarter of an inch. Slightly less intimidating, less likely to fall off the edge. Not that big of a difference between quarter and half. Uh, oh, sorry, quarter and eighth. I just like eight. But again, if you're new to bag making, do the slightly bigger one. It's not that noticeable that people are going to look at it and be like, oh my god. Uh, but it will get help you to get the hang of stitching so close to the edge. And then you can just work your way out to the edge. For me, I'm using like the middle of my foot. This foot is from eBay. It is a Teflon plastic. So this part's plastic and the underneath is Teflon. I have tried the brands that aren't green and it turns out they don't work as well. So I didn't buy it just, well, originally I did buy it just because it's green. Uh, but I found that of all the Teflon feet, the green one doesn't lose the Teflon underneath like the other ones. Uh, and so therefore is better and lasts longer. Uh, and depending on who you buy them from, they're anywhere from three to ten dollars for that foot, by the way. All right, fabulous! Oh, I love my detail, makes me happy. Um, okay, so what are we up to? We are up to that's my flap, that's my back. We have to sew the back or the flap onto the back. So, funnily enough, it just goes in the gap. It's a very well thought out pattern, right? So that way it'll just sit flush. So you just line it up in that little gap. Voila. Now, got a couple of options. Uh, you could put rivets all the way along. You can stitch it. You can do both. 
uh, I think the pattern did both from memory. They put one rivet each there and stitched the rest of it down. What you don't want to do is stitch it all the way up because this is seam allowance for another thing. So I kind of only want to stitch the very bottom so that we can still sew the bag together. But to hold it in place, now that I've got it lined up and I can feel that, I'm going to put a clip here and a clip here and that will hold it so that I can freely move it around. Then I'm going to start here and I'm going to do a quarter of an inch from the edge. So there's going to be a second line of stitching for just a little bit. It's also pushing against something over here. Oh good, now it sounds weird. Can you hear that? The machine sounds weird. Okay, stitch down. Happy days. You can take the clips off now. You can add some rivets as well if you want to. Uh, I'm fairly confident in my thread though that that will be fine. Right. Front and back. And to get them together and line up the edges. Now I am going to put clips on this this time because it is thicker. And the foam tends to help distort stuff and because we've got the pleats and everything else going on, I just want to make sure everything lines up lovely. So I'm going to put clips. That way it won't fight me as much. Oops. Oh, look at that. I dropped something else. <sighs> okay. Not going to sit flat. Don't even try and make it. I mean, we can later. No point now. Uh, you can put your magnet back on if you need to. Oh, I know what the sound is. Okay. I'm less worried about the sound now. It was the belt rubbing against my box of stuff. Trim that, cut off the tail, other side. And backstage. Trim, I see tails. Cut them all off. Be gone with a lot of them. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Okay. We're going to put that inside. Because otherwise it's just going to annoy me. Moving on to the next part. Base. So, this has measurements. For where the feet go. I never put one in the middle, uh, but you can, obviously, do what you like. I always put four bag feet in, um, and this has got it all lined up for me, so I don't have to measure it out, which is a nice change. So we're going to push up from the bottom. three and four. I also I haven't forgotten about the other stuff either if you're wondering. I've still got my twist lock. It's not really a twist lock, it's a bendy lock. Squish, squish. So this is just my 10 mil rivet set that I have on my website, always make sure that the domes are facing up and the rubber actually prevents them from getting damaged. You just want to squish them until you feel it lock in. And then you want to make sure that they are locked in because once or twice they haven't been and that was not fun to fix. Um, I'm 
I might as well do the flap last. So what I actually haven't done is put the placement of the handles properly on here. Um, but we've got options. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Since I haven't done it anyway, there's no point in trying to do it now. So we're going to line up these side seams and pull and then make a little snip to find center front and center back. Doesn't matter if you do black to front or front to back, just need them all. We're going to do the same to our base. So I do have base stabilizer on here to make it nice and firm. Uh, you can also put bag foam on top of your base stabilizer if you want to. Each to their own and all that jazz. So now those center points, actually let's find the end ones as well on the short ends. These ones that I'm cutting now will line up with that seam. And the ones here are going to line up with the front and back center, which is what we just found. So I'm going to put them right sides together, grab a bunch of clips, and I'm going to clip it with the clips facing the base piece. We go like that. Like so. And then once I've done the straight bits, you can come and line up that center side. And then the corners should just fit for you. So the idea is, with this, is the stabilizer is the actual end size. And so the rest of the fabric outside of the stabilizer will probably warp a little bit and that is okay it's meant to bring it down put the clips in and then do the other side so same again Start from the center. You always want to do the corners last. Um, if you start here and went around, you'd actually find that the bag is distorted. Not because you did it, well, you did do it wrong, but not necessarily intentionally because of you, but because the corners is where all the squishiness happens. So if you make sure that the corners are the last one is done, it will fit but it just means that you haven't overly or under squished the corners going from one side to the other. We work from the center outwards. And ta-da! All right, I will install the twist lock or snap lock thing in a minute. And because I missed part of the handles, I might come up with another solution. Just bear with me on that. I'm thinking. I didn't mean to miss it, uh, but I'm not pulling apart half the bag because I missed it. It's vinyl and I don't want to over perforate it, so I will come up with a solution. There is always another way. The simpler solution is I just rivet the handles directly to the bag without the extra hardware. That would solve that problem. Instead of using the gate rings, I could get two strap ends, stick them on, Bob's your uncle. That's one option. Another option is, is that I rivet the strap connectors just straight onto the bag without stitching so that we don't have the stitching coming through the back as well. There is always another way. You just take what you do in a different bag pattern and apply it to this one when you forget stuff. I didn't deliberately forget it, I promise. I fully intended to make the pattern the way it was written for a change, but we can't win them all. So, I wonder if they were meant to go in or out. So these could have gone the other way, I'm thinking. Too late now, that's okay. Uh, 
I don't know. Maybe I should check the pattern. My my darts here. I have bought the fabric in, but I actually think they're meant to be the other way. Um, but I can fix that in a second. The main thing I need to know right now is, is this the front panel? Is where the twist lock goes because we need the twist lock, which will be in this space. It'll be in this space. So I will go and print off another piece that has the twist lock so that I can line it up perfectly. Um, and then we'll install that and then I will come up with a solution for the handles. Right, I checked the pattern and right here is where we actually install this. So what I want to do is make sure these prongs are straight. Uh, so this is, I don't have these on my website. I just had a random one in my cupboard. So I thought I'd use it. So it bends down to lock in place as, put, as opposed to the twist lock. But it is the same principle. So we are going to do the same installation process. So up the center right here oops you might want to mark it with a pen where are all my pens so you can just line this up following the so the center points here so you can draw a line if you need to to find the center and then i'm just going to put in my two marks like that then i can take my craft knife and cut through the layers like so and then we push this through from the front to the back through the holes that I just cut one side Maybe the other side I didn't cut it big enough. There is always that possibility. I like to make the holes as small as humanly possible. There we go. Then we just take the back gasket. So this is to hold it on. Now they're never even. So one side's going to have more excess than the other. You just have to deal with it. And then you can fold them in or out. Now I personally like out. Some people like in. There is no right or wrong way. You do it however you feel like doing it. You just want to make sure that they are, in fact, flat, whichever way you decide to do it. Like that. And now it is installed. So we're going to do the flap one at the end. We're going to deal with the whole flap at the end because I made a boo-boo and that's okay. So. We're going to take the lining, I've turned it right sides out, and we're just going to put it inside the bag. Now I'm going to put my zipper pocket up against the back wall where the flap is. So zipper pocket touches flap. And then I'm going to start at the side, and I'm going to line up those two side seams, because they do match. That is the point. Alright, line them up, two clips, not one, but two. Or at least two, you can do more if you want. You also want to make sure that whatever way it's facing down the bottom, it's doing the same up the top or will have the same problem that I showed you with the base. It can be fixed, but just try not to do it. And then... Wait, was the lining front meant to have pleats too? I don't know. Pin it in, clip it down. Like that. And then we're gonna do the back wall. So they should all pretty much just fit in for you. Do, 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 do. Lots of clips, work your way around. And voila. So now we're on a two and a half stitch length. You're not going to be able to see this. Uh, maybe I should change your angle. Let's 
try that to see if it's going to be a little bit easier for you to see what we're doing. So I'm just going to slot the bag under here at the seam allowance. We're going to stitch, back stitch. And off we go. Slow and steady wins the race. Because you don't want to knock everything out of place. Ooh, that rhymes. I'm on fire today. Spin it round and round. You want to clean up your clips as you go so that they don't get in the way. Again, now's a really good time to put that magnet on. Ah! Now before I turn this through, the last thing I want to do is again with the zigzag scissors and I want to go along the base. Take off that excess so that the base will sit nicer inside the bag. Do, 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 do. Doesn't matter if it's not neat, nobody's looking at it. I mean, unless someone deconstructs your bag, and good luck with that. Joke's on them if they buy your bag to pull it apart to see how it works, because pattern's probably cheaper than a whole bag. Alright, so I'm going to push in the base, and then I'm going to pull it through the zipper pocket. Now this is a big enough pocket that it will come. It's just going to take a bit of persuasion as such. So the easiest way to do it is to engulf the entire bag within the slip pocket like that. You'll find that it'll maneuver out a lot easier. See? There's the flap. And then you just grab another random part. And you want to pull gently. You don't want to just rip it apart. Ah, oh, that really hurt my shoulder. Ow. For those that don't know, I've done something to my shoulder and turning bags actually really hurts me. Especially doing stupid things like I just did. Jerky movements really hurts it. I've already had several sessions on it. It is better than it was. At least I can use my arm. Um, but it's still really sore. Right, so I'm using my hand to press along that seam to make sure the base is out and lovely, or like so. And then we just want to stitch up the pocket. So I stick my fingers in it like this, pinch it underneath, and then use my fingers to my first knuckle to tuck it in. And that's how much I turn through. It's not an official size, it's just a knuckle's worth. Uh, and I do that because it is quicker than trying to measure how much you tuck under. Yes, my pocket may be a minuscule smaller than yours, but it was pretty quick to work it out, so I don't really mind. Nobody's going to notice if your pocket is an eighth of an inch smaller than the next person's. I promise. Also, people tend to find bag makers they like and just buy from them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, home stretch. The bag's looking awesome. I'm gonna stand up, and push that lining in, and then I wanna top stitch it. So, a couple of things, I'm just gonna move that over there. A couple of things we can do. The easiest one would be turn it inside out and top stitch it. Um, but that's also gonna hurt my shoulder, if I'm honest. So we're not doing that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to roll to get that seam right on the edge and then I'm gonna clip it down. This is gonna be such a pretty bag. Also, I can already see, see here, I can already tell that the bag will need a Tory squish because it's not gonna sit properly. This is a great summer bag. Maybe this pattern should be my next bag. I'm still trying to decide on what to do my Lord of the Rings fabric on. It's a really hard decision, by the way. This is a surprisingly big bag. From the photo, um, 
of the pattern. It actually looked like it was going to be like a small little armband, but this is huge. I like it. I don't like small bags, turns out, because I end up getting lumped carrying everything, and it's easier to carry in a big bag. Even when I used to carry a small bag, um, there's always something my child needs me to carry, and hubby usually wants me to take his wallet and stuff. So I have found that a bigger bag just makes my life easier. I mean, I could say no, but I don't. Because I am the crazy bag lady. And that's okay. Alright, home stretch. But clips at least. So the whole top is now clipped and fabulous. I could lose half my arm in this bag. Alright, so we are going to stitch it right side up. I'm going to go up to my um, decorative top stitching length. I'm going to move the clip bowl just because I feel like I'm going to hit it with something. And I'm going to start at the side seam. And I'm just going to push the bag into this very awkward position so that I can top stitch along the edge. Now, because of this, I am going to do the quarter top stitch. Why? Because I don't feel like fighting the bag more than necessary. And it'll be easier to guide a straight line with a quarter inch because it's just the edge of the foot. I love a good vinyl accent on a fabric bag. This is a great bag. I don't think this will last long on my website. It's beautiful. And we're coming into spring summer right now, so this is like the perfect fabric. We're just top stitching. I wonder if I've got enough leftovers to do some kind of a wallet. Now the main thing we want to make sure is that the flap is not in the way of anything. Nothing else will tend to get in your way except the flap. So you can see how a quarter of an inch is easier to guide along the edge and it won't look that much different. I also did this to prove a point that quarter inch is not bad for those that are like, oh, but it says an eighth of an inch. They are more guidelines than rules most of the time. A couple of times you do have to actually follow what it says, but most of the time it's more of a guideline than a rule. So I just did that with the full quarter inch instead of a half inch, and you can't really tell the difference. It's still holding everything the way I need it to, which is the important part. So then the sides come in and we're going to magnet them together. <laughs> that's kind of the point. I also need to melt my little threads here. Do, 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 do. Love the thread zapper. For those of you that haven't seen this before, I've actually made like a playlist of all my gadgets and why I love them. Uh, so if you're ever looking for something you think you may need for a gift of some kind, there is a whole section. Alright, magnet, magnet, check. Oops. Now, the reason that popped open is because the bag's not used to being in this position. So it'll just take a little bit of getting used to for it to sit like that. Um, just give it some time. It'll settle to the shape that it needs to be, right? This is the first time I'm forcing it to do this. It's not loving it, but it will get used to it, I promise. So, that's the bag, and then we just need to add... See? How amazing did that turn out? Oh my god, I love it. I'm not crazy. I swear there was method to my madness. I envisioned this. The only thing I forgot, kind of, was the handles. What we're going to do is we're going to rivet them on. All the way through, right there, problem solved. I was going to do style one anyway, because uh, it's here. But I'm thinking maybe, because it is quite a large bag... I am thinking maybe instead of the arm strap, I might cut a longer set and do a full shoulder strap because I think that would be more useful to people. Um, what you could do is if you actually made it the way the pattern says with the gate rings here, what you could do is you could have both straps available and then they can interchange them because the gate rings open. For anyone that doesn't know what a gate ring is, it's these fancy rings that spring inwards so that you can slide things on and off. So you could have the bag sell with two handle options. Um, 
because then it's more versatile to more oh, people. Found it. Um, so the option one, this is where my handles were supposed to be. Um, so when you print out the pattern, there'll be a lot of this shape. Uh, it's because they have all the different handle placements. This is the one I wanted to do. Uh, it just didn't quite turn out the way I hoped. So there's the center. And then seam allowance down. So it's like right at the edge here, which is fine. So I'm going to take this and line it up there. And then I'm going to score it with this instead of a pen, which might seem insane. And I probably am. And that's okay. Right. And so then we need to score out the part where the screws go in. This is missing a screw, but that's all right. I have a bag of spares. Um, for anyone that buys my hardware, if you ever have lost all the screws that come with all the small stuff like this, hit me up um, and I can chuck in some spares in the next order that you place. Because I have a drawer full. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say a drawer full. I literally mean a drawer full of like extra bits, screws and things. So like all of those little ones in there. They come in several different sizes for different things, just so you know. Um, and I'm just trying to pick which one's going to be best. Because these are different to those, which are different to these. We might just do... I need one with like a stopper on the end. Might have to be this one, except that one looks too big. So these are what are come... I don't know why they sent so many. I think they accidentally did it. This is not how they come. This is from several different purchases worth. Um, I think it's going to have to be that one. Alright, so... That's alright. Let's grab our cutting mat again. Love a good cutting mat. Because we need to cut through all the layers because this goes through all the... <sighs> my shoulder. Alright. So. It opens like this. And this is what we're trying to put on the outside. So I just need to cut slightly larger than what I scored. Because I scored on the inside edge and we actually need the outside edge. So I know you can't see it. Um, you're just going to have to trust me on this. You can buy special like cut dies that will do this for you. Um, I don't have them though. I know. Shocking that I don't have a gadget. Uh, it's more that I don't really have the press to squish them in. Um, I'll get it one day. I'm also trying to stop buying so many gadgets before we purchase our house because, you know, I need to make sure all these things are going to fit in the new space. Anyway. So, this is what I assume is the biggest size or the size that I need. However, I always seem to manage to cut it the wrong size and I always need to go back. So I'm hoping that by the scoring, instead of drawing with a pen, this has worked out better. I am hoping. I just need to cut a little bit more of the fabric here. But the vinyl side seems to be good. So that's a good start. I just need a little bit more off there. Done. All done. So then we're going to take this. Pop it on the back. And take the screw. This is probably the quickest I've ever installed one of these. Right, so that's that side in. I'm not sure if this one's going to fit. We are definitely going to try though. I actually think it might be a bit too wide. Which leaves me with a new problem, doesn't it? Or I could just steal one out of the other ones I have. I bought these as like a tester to see if I like them and see if I want to have them on my website. Um, so 
so far I like it, but I haven't really played with it on the actual bag yet, so we'll see. I always like to get testers of stuff before I just purchase it, because if I don't like it, I'm not stocking it. Because I'm only going to endorse stuff I actually enjoy doing, which makes sense to me. Alright, screw it in. Nice and tight. Wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. I like it. Alright, let's get onto this handle. So, I need to cut a long one, because this one is just going to be like an arm handle. And I think I want like a shoulder one. So I think I'm going to cut it. I'm going to have it so it hangs like this. So I'm going to cut 24 inches. And again, I am just making this up, which is why I'm telling you the sizing. So I'm going to cut 24 inches of each. Because I'm going to rivet it on, the side can just be... Actually, no. So I'm going to cut... 24 inches of no 20 which way do I want to do it I'll cut 24 inches of each and then we'll work it out all right so I have folded this so that the center's there because that just makes sense to me and so then we're going to put right sides together I'm going to open it out and we're going to stitch along there and I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam allowance, nothing major. And I'm going to go back to joining stitch length. Like that. I'll put them up there. Put those away. Alright, so I want the one on top to just be a little bit longer. So I'm just going to chop off like a little bit from that one. Then I'm going to make sure that there's no twists and we're going to open this out and stitch it together as well. I promise there's method in my madness. Because that way the joining edge won't be directly on the edge when we attach the handle. So, I'm going to put some double sided tape down the center of the vinyl side because the other side I've already ironed together. Alright, so down the centre, then we just need to fold each side into the middle. And then when we get to this edge, it's going to get a bit thick, but that's okay. So I'm going to have the... like that. And then it folds down. Actually, we will fold all of this first. So you want to get it right in the center, or as best you can. Over. Like that. And then, you want to line it up on top, like that. Yeah, preferably not lift. Even, Steven, like that. So there's just a little bit on the other side. Pretty much the seam allowance, because I just did a little bit. Now I'm going to clip this together so that it doesn't shift on me, because it feels somewhat important to do that. And I'm going to have it fabric side up and the vinyl side will be underneath the part that sits on your shoulder. So this is the same way she builds her straps. I've just done a different size because I stuffed it up, essentially. That's what happened there. Won't sugarcoat it. I forgot to attach the straps, so now I'm improvising a little bit to still get a fabulous looking strap. It's going to be long enough because that bag is quite large, but in a good way. And I really do love that I did the reverse applique. If you didn't want to do that, embroidery also works. Or you could put a panel on that flap. That would also be really cool. All those things work out.
Oh, clipping, clipping. Last little bit. The reason I'm clipping it in place is because the vinyl is fighting me a little bit. It doesn't like to have all this extra stuff going on. Uh, so by clipping it in place, it just stays where I tell it to. Sometimes you clip, sometimes you don't. Right. So now we're going to have this on one side, this on the other, and just the raw edgy parts are basically tucked under from that extra little bit I chopped off. Uh, so when I rivet that to the bag, you're not going to see the joint. That was pretty much my intention. So now we're going to go up to a decorative stitch length, which today for me is three and a half because I've gone slightly smaller. So we're going to stitch. Oops. Now, I'm going to do this at an eighth of an inch. You can do it at a quarter if you wish. Needle down. Pivot. Oh my gosh. And off we go. So the clips just hold everything in place. You also want to make sure you're not stretching your fabric on top. Um, and if it does have a little bit of stretch, you might want to consider putting some medium woven interfacing on it. This is fine because it is the cotton canvas. need to attach the handles so I'm gonna put two rivets there and two rivets there and then ta-da and I want to have the fabric facing up because it's on the vinyl if this was fabric I'd flip it the other way so that it's an accent but I want it to be accented so what I'm gonna do is now that the bags close I'm going to find Like that. I'm just going to mark where I'm going to install these. And then you just want to kind of get the bag out of the way. And I'm going to go that far from the edge. So I want to actually, what I want to do to line this up well, grab this and your rivet spacing template. If you've got it. If not, you can use a ruler. I'm going to put this on here, right at the edge. And then I'm going to go half an inch. And I'm not going to be able to see that. Uh, what's my solution? So it's about to draw black on black. So that's not going to work. And then I want to go one and a quarter. I'm just going to... Even though that's not a big enough hole, it's big enough so I can now see that. Do that one and do the other one. So I did half inch from the end and then one and a quarter inch from the end. And then I'm just going to fold it in half and you can line up those edges. Or actually, no, I have this. We don't need to do that. And now that I think about it, I can just draw it on the back. One and two. I'm going to hang these on here so they're easier to grab them where they were. Punch the holes. Then I'm going to lay this up against here and I'm going to take my pen and just poke it through the hole so that I can mark where the strap's going to go. And that doesn't look straight. So I'm also going to grab this. This is why you should not skip stuff. There's a lot more steps involved if you have to actually measure. So there and then that one. And then from this end, we're going to go there. And then there. 
All right, so that's where the holes need to be. Rulers are your best friend. I'll do that in a minute. All right, I'll take those off now because they've marked my center points. Now let's just punch the holes. One and two. So this is going through all the layers, which is why we're using two rivets and no stitching. You can stitch them if you want to, and if you don't have a rivet press, you can definitely stitch them down. I just thought rivets would be prettier because I still want some hardware on the bag. Because hardware makes everything pretty. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I've got four posts and four caps. So we're going to go through both of them like that. No? Yeah? No. There we go. And then we're going to go into those two holes and it should all line up perfectly. And then put the caps on. One and two. And then we just need to squish them. One, two. So that's one side on. Then we're going to come to the other side. One and two through the bag, like so, and then caps on the back, and squish those down too. And your bag is done. So we just Pop that in there, pull it down. How adorable is that? So again, got lots of options. I like my subtle little bit. Uh, you could have done something bigger. You could do like a whole embroidery across here. But that is the happiest summery bag. So cute. I like it. Another thing you could do is you could square out these corners and then the rivets I think would look amazing. But yeah, no, that turned out really, really well. And so then when I put it on my shoulder, I've got, I haven't got a huge amount of space, but I've got enough. So it kind of just sits nicely. So anyway, that's the bag. And that's how to solve all the problems of forgetting stuff. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.